Hi, Pete. Hi there, Frank. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you very much. Good. That was a really good video we just watched. It was excellent, actually. It showed the development, the quality, and also the observation of the market needs that Hello not only puts into starters and alternators, but also into all the products that they produce. So what we're we looking at today then? Well, we're looking at the road to electrification. And within that, obviously, we have the vehicle energy management. And why is that so important? Well, if you remember, it's part of our megatrends. So let's take a short review of what our megatrends are. Here we go. As you can see, we've got efficiency and electrification as the first one. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Mild hybrid vehicles on the upwards trend, obviously. We've got connectivity and digitalization with embedded connectivity. We were talking about mobile phones and things like that last time. Also trending upwards and autonomous driving, which we did last time, if you remember. We did indeed, yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, okay, that was the last um, webinar that we did. And that's partially automated vehicles, of course. And then the individualization and dynamic interior lights, which we touched on as well last time. And how will we go through that today, Pete? Well, we're going to do the same format as last time. We're going to start in the past, travel to today, and then into the future. And will we have an expert uh, with us to explain about the technology development? Good job you mentioned that, Frank. Yes, we will. We're going to have somebody from the Energy Management Development Department of Hella, and that person is going to take us through where we're going in the future and beyond. Excellent. So, Pete, how do we explain the development of energy management? Well, we need to look at voltages, really, because that's the key to energy management, controlling the voltages in the vehicle. And we started, obviously, everybody knows 12 volt systems. We've got 24 volt systems in trucks and so on. When you start to talk about hybrid and battery electric vehicles, however, then you need to look at higher voltages between 350 to 400 volts. And we talked about volts. that in our last uh, webinar about autonomous driving. Well, we did because that is the infrastructure and the amount of electronics that's in the vehicle today needs to have voltage to actually work. So the energy management has to be very precise so that all these systems can function. Well, it has a lot of management to look after. It certainly is. Well, I think we should uh, take our viewers have a closer look. Well, we certainly do. But as I said before, we need to go back in time and have a look at what was happening back in the day. Let's go. Imagine starting a car that today. <laughs> exactly. You see, that, that was what they had to do back in the day, Frank. Old Charlie Chaplin probably taking his family on a road trip. Didn't they have electric starters back in the day? Well, they did, and they started around 1912. And it was, in fact, Cadillac that put the first starter into their production vehicles. I would have imagined that was Ford that did that. Well, I would have thought so too, but it was Henry Ford, being Henry Ford, decided he'd do it seven years later in 1919 to keep his vehicles cheaper than the competition. And of course, with that, we needed to generate electricity. So we had generators, we had dynamos, and we also had magnetos to do that for us. But the alternators were first used by the military to power their radios. They were. The military did use that, as you say, but in the automotive sector, it was in fact Chrysler in 1960 that used the alternator in their production. And do we still use those same products in the present day? Yes, we do. And as you can see, here they are, Frank. The starter and the alternator. Classic. Uh, they've obviously gone through developments. They do the same function as they used to do then, but the materials, the power, and the efficiency of them has obviously improved over time. And they've also got a little bit smaller and compacter than they were. So when did Heller start making starters and alternators? Around about 1986. So there's about over 35 years worth of experience in starters and alternators there. And today in this range, we have over 1,300 products. That's correct. Oh, there we go. <laughs> If you look at the one behind you, Frank, the one on the left there, that is a simple turn signal communication of a vehicle today. And what is this picture on the right-hand side describing? Well, if we're comparing the vehicle communication, especially in the terms of energy management, then this is your start-stop system. And as you can see, there's lots more control units, lots more components involved 
in creating the start-stop system. So we just talked about the starter and the alternator. Yeah. We have two more products here. What's the third item? The third item down here is the intelligent battery sensor. That's the one that Heller produces over 30 million of. That's correct, 30 million produced. And the fourth item? The fourth one down here is the voltage stabilizer, which is part of the start-stop system. And Heller was first to market with the DC-DC converter, and he's the market leader in this product. Correct. And don't forget, Frank, we've got an expert later on who's going to talk a lot more about DC-DC converters and voltage stabilizers. I'd be really interested to hear the development of Hello OE on these DCC converters. Well, that's what we'll get to here. But for the meantime, let's go and look at the other products that we've been mentioning. Excellent. That was highly interesting, Frank, to see the products and how they are performing in our energy, energy management. It's great to see the products on the PowerPoint, but We've got some here for real. So uh, I have a start in front of me. What do you have? I have an alternator. More about that later. But as you've got a starter, why don't you start? Then let me describe what I have here. I have a start stop starter. And it's basically an electric motor that via the pinion, which meshes with the flywheel, starts the engine. Okay. Uh, you mentioned start stop. Does that mean it's a only for start, stop, or is it a different design? Well, this is a very high quality product, a bit more heavy duty, and there are so many uh, new starts to process within the vehicle, this product can handle all those new processes. Oh, great, okay. Um, well, the uh, alternator that I have here is a generator, and it generates AC-DC. <laughs> I, I, I somehow knew that would happen, Frank. Um, it's not ACDC, the band, sorry. Okay. Back to the real stuff then. It's a AC generator or alternator, as it's sometimes affectionately known, and it generates alternating current. At the back here, there's a rectifier, which rectifies that alternating current into direct current or DC. DC is used by the vehicle's energy management system to power consumers and also recharge the battery after all those start-stop sequences that they have to do. So, in effect, both products here are able to fulfill the demands and our workshops should have no fear in fitting them to the vehicle. So as part of our energy management, Hello uses 100% new parts. So all the 1,300 products I mentioned earlier, uh, Heller has the confidence to give a three-year guarantee and the products come deposit-free. Deposit-free, which means no core. So that's good news. our workshops don't have to send the core back before they get their deposit back. So that's a thing of the past now. So the products we have here that can be used in many different uh, vehicle types, and therefore we're able to then cover a wider coverage of vehicles. That's correct, Frank. The idea behind it is that a, a starter motor or alternator that's fitted to a particular power rating of a vehicle can also be fitted to lower power rated vehicles in that same series. So you get m one part covering more applications, making it a lot easier for our customers, less space on the storage shelf in the workshops, and also uh, less hassle for the wholesaler. So quality brings back the returns for the workshop as well? Correct, it does. That's great to know. But I did have a question from earlier I wanted to cover again with you. Okay, well, let's go and see if we can answer that question okay. for you, Frank. Super, Thanks. Let's go. That was really interesting, Pete, to see our products up close and personal. It certainly was, Frank. And we learned a little bit more about them as well. And I have one of our intelligent battery sensors here. One of the 30 good. million we produce every year. But what happens when they go wrong? I'm glad you asked that, Frank, because that is the next stage on our road to electrification. And it's diagnostics. Can we go and have a look? We certainly can. If you follow me, we'll go and do the diagnostics. Excellent. Welcome into the workshop, Frank. Yeah, thank you very much. 
and we've got a vehicle already prepared to do some diagnostics on about our intelligent battery sensor. So we're using the Mega Max 77? Well, you're going to use the Mega Max 77. Okay. I'm going to try and turn you into a technician. Oh, that'd be interesting. Okay. So, well, as you can see on the first screen here, we've got no fault codes stored, which means that there is something wrong because the customer's complained about it, but we need to find out what. So now I'm going to guide Frank through a simple diagnostics for the intelligent battery sensor. So Frank, if you can now have a look at the first thing we need to do is look at the parameters. So which... first of all, I check parameters on here. Correct. Okay. And then everything's pre-selected. So all you need to do is start it up. So I start the diagnosis interfa interface bus and by pressing start. Correct. And then after a few seconds, we'll get the parameters shown. And from that, we can deduce there may be something wrong. It takes a little time to, for the control unit to actually start this up. And as you can see now, we've got a pre-selection there. And Frank is simply going to activate those pre-selected. Sorry, from my battery sensors, and so away I we activate go. activate on here. Yeah. OK, they can see it. And as you can see there, we've got four parameters coming from the vehicle. What can you see that's not really correct there? So from our readout, I see I have no battery current. Exactly. So no it indicates current? the problem. Well, it, it does, but it gives us a direction to go in. So current is connected to voltage. So what we need to do is now look at the voltage. And to do that, we use our oscilloscope. So I will open the menu here yep. and I will choose the oscilloscope. Correct. And we need to select channel two. Now the wires are already connected to the vehicle on the right connections. So you should be well, good to go. Choose channel two and I press start measurement. Correct. And now the measurement starts. Um, there's something oh, wrong there, isn't there? I have no volts. We have no voltage. Okay, so no voltage to our intelligent battery sensor means it can't work. So now then, let's see what, what do we, what could really be the issue here? Broken wire. Maybe one of the fuse is not working properly. Correct, Frank, could be a fuse. So why don't we have a look at the fuse box? Let's see what the menu allows me to look at. Yeah. Oh, I have one here for fuses and relays. Correct. And then if we look for the supply to the intelligent battery so sensor. Here's my battery sensor, 5A. 5 amps, and that indicates on the diagram, as you can see, where the fuse is. So, Frank, what I suggest you do is you take this, which is a good fuse, and see what happens when we replace it. Now, make sure you use the correct so I, fuse, Frank. The one down here, it was the yeah, fourth one should here. Should be a 5 amp fuse. Take this same 5 color. amp. I'll put my new one back in. Now what we need to do is see if you fix the problem. So you need to come back over here. And where did we find the first problem? In our oscilloscope. Correct. So therefore, I check that once more. Yeah. From my menu, oscilloscope. Yeah. Channel two channel again. Two. Yeah. You and remember well. And restart the measurement. And start the measurement. You make a good technician, Frank. And what do you see now? I now have voltage. Right. It's way above battery voltage, but that's because with all diagnostic work, we have a battery charger connected. What else did we check? We checked the fuses and relay. Yeah, but before that, before we did the oscilloscope, we checked the parameters. Four box parameters. Yeah, the parameters of the intelligent battery sensor. So go back to the parameters. Okay, it's correct. Check that and press start. Yeah. And again, it takes a while for the vehicle communications interface to start and give us the parameters all being read from our control unit. So we now have our we've got four them. selections here. I will correct. choose again once again activate. Exactly. And now what you can see, Frank, is with my battery sensor, it's now telling me all the four parameters are working correctly. Exactly. We've got current, which is what we're looking for. The current although the engine isn't running, is coming from our battery charger. And even that can be detected by an intelligent battery sensor. So a layman like me using the Mega Max 77 was able to find the fault and repair it. With a little bit of guidance from me. From of course. Of course. OK. So. Now, I've yep. got to go and see our Hello OE expert. Right. Kai's so, coming to talk about DC-DC converters and things. He certainly is. So ah, thanks very right, much okay. for showing me the Mega Max 77. No and problem, how diagnostics Frank. work. I must run. You run to Kai, and I'll Cheers, tidy mate. up here. 
Okay, thanks, Frank. So, just come back from a really great practical, looking at the micro-hybrid cars with the 12-volt start-stop system. And now we'd like to get a bit more expertise. So I'd like to introduce Kai from HelloE. Hello, Frank. Nice Hello, to Kai. meet you. Nice yeah, to be glad here. Glad you're here. Um, can we explain now to our viewers the difference between the, the mild hybrid we now see in, in the mega trends to the current uh, micro-hybrid situation? Yes, for sure. Would be my pleasure. So you already explained microhybrid as a topology where we integrate start-stop to a 12-volt combustion engine system to really reduce the CO2 emission, which is a very important topic at the moment. The next step on the road to electrification, so to say, is the integration of an additional voltage level in so-called mild hybrid systems. In such a mild hybrid vehicle, we are integrating a 48-volt board net. Why do we have a 48 volt? What's in between 48 volt and a 12 and 24 volt? Yeah, this is really a matter of energy consumption. Because as you know, energy or power is voltage multiplied with current. And when we are able to have a higher voltage, we can reduce the yeah, necessity for current when we want to provide a certain amount of okay. power. And when we take a look, for instance, on the systems we see here, this comfort functions, which uh, yeah, in some cases need a high amount of energy, like air conditioning, electric steering, for instance, PTC heater, and so on. When we talk about such systems, it's very beneficial to move these to the 48 volt, where we need a lower amount of current. And by means of that, we can reduce uh, the harnessing, the wiring, and so on within the car. So we still have um, different starters and, and alternators uh, going back in different vehicles. What's the next development from Hello OE to manage that? Yeah, um, on the one hand, when we talk about the alternators and the generators, we can say for sure in a mild hybrid system, the generator is moved to the 48 volt side because there we really need the energy and we want to make benefit out of it. And we do not want to have two generators within a car. Okay. So the 12 volt generator is replaced. Uh, on the starter side, uh, it's really depending on the topology. We can have a 48 volt integrated starter, for instance, but we can also still have a 12 volt starter because in some cases we need this for a cold train, for instance. And how is Hello OE managing this uh, transfer to the new technology? Yeah, there these two things here come into the game. These are our so-called DC-DC converters for 48 volt for mild hybrid applications. Um, this is a main component in such a topology because, as I stated just before, our generator is moved to the 48 volt side and also some of these comfort functions we are seeing here are migrated to the 48 volt side. Nevertheless, several less energy consuming um, yeah, functions like driver assistance systems and so on are still on the 12 volt side and we need this DC-DC converter to provide the energy from the 48 volt side to the 12 volt side where it is needed. Uh, I understand Heller is a market leader in DC-DC converters. So can you explain the difference between the two products, the one I have and the one you have there on the table? Yeah, you see it directly from the outside. This one here is a passive air-cooled variant and this one here is a liquid-cooled variant. So this is really about thermal management and this is depending on what you need as a car supplier. How much energy do you need and how can you integrate this into your system? And depending on this, we developed a passive air-cooled variant with a lower power class and a very high powerful um, variant which is liquid-cooled for premium and luxury cars. I'd like to thank Kai for the real clear information and I hope our viewers have a good view now of our current products. Yeah, it was my pleasure, Frank. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And now I would like to take this opportunity and also give you a short outlook to our upcoming products at the Heller Energy Management Roadmap. Well, let's go over to the workshop and have a look at our current vehicle. Yes, for sure. So Kai, here was a car we were working on earlier in the diagnostic workshop. Uh, not really, Frank. Please have a more detailed look again. Ah, this is one of the plug-in hybrid vehicles. Remember from our last webinar that we have to take special precautions. Yes, exactly, Frank. Especially when you see something like this orange harnesses inside, you can be quite sure that we are talking about high voltage components where we have to consider very high safety measures when we work on this. But in our case right now, we are talking about theoretical things, so we do not have to do this right now. Can you explain the components we have in here? 
Yes, for sure. I think we talked about mild hybrid before. We talked about different voltage levels in the car. What we need there, we need a DC-DC converter for the conversion of 48 volt to 12 volt. And we have the same here. When we talk about hybrids, plug-in hybrids and uh, battery electric vehicles, we have high voltage on the one side, like something 400 volts, etc. And on the other side, we still have 12 volt. And there we need also this main component, a DC-DC converter. And based on our expertise on 40 8 volt. Heller will also really focus work on high voltage DC DC converters from now on to be in the market there also. And on the other side, we will also will uh, develop onboard chargers to really get the energy out of the grid into the car, into the um, high volt batteries, and then from there make it available to the car. That's excellent. I'd like to thank Kai for the expertise he's brought today, explaining to myself and to our viewers the current Heller products and the future products of the future. It was my pleasure, Frank. Thank you very nice much. to meet you. Yeah, I must now go and find our P. And yeah, thank you very much for today and we'll meet again soon. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Well, Frank, I hope the information you got from Kai was useful. It was really interesting to understand all the developments of Hello OE products that we have in place now. I bet it was. And we've had quite a journey today from 1912 through to the present day and also now into the future and beyond. It's been a really interesting journey for me and I hope also for our viewers. Well, yes, I think it was informative for our viewers. And also, don't forget, Hello Tech World has a 24-7 technical portal with not just information about energy management, but anything else technical as well. So what I want to say from my side, thanks for watching. And thanks very much for watching from my side. Don't forget, after this, there's a film called Passion for Clean Mobility. So stay tuned for that. So what's left to say is... Cheers. Cheers. When I look around, I see a world that's changing at tremendous speed. A new generation is committed to bringing technology into balance with the environment. The change can be seen everywhere. Take electric vehicles. We see them all the time on our streets. Companies like Hella are shaping mobility of the future. With energy management systems and thermal management solutions that make eco-friendly driving even better and more economical. There's no stopping climate neutral drive systems. They are a perfect fit for our time and are just fun to drive. Thanks to engine recuperation, we have a much smarter and more efficient way to use energy. Infrastructures are constantly improving, which makes switching to electromobility even more appealing. I'm very proud to be actively shaping this change here at Hello. Our technologies help us reach milestones in sustainable mobility. Each of us in the worldwide Hella network plays an important role. We are all connected by our passion for turning fascinating ideas into reality and sharing our achievements with the world. Personally, I'm always amazed at how our concept of mobility has changed and everything that is now possible. And it just shows we can reinvent ourselves and make things happen. Not by waiting, but by actively shaping the future. This is our chance.